guys how are you doing left-handed series episode three if you're new to the channel welcome let me bring you up to speed Okay, so my name's Simon Smith, PJ professional down here at Burford Golf Club, and I want to compete in long drive next year. However, I thought it'd be a great series to start practicing golf left-handed straight from the beginning. My left-handed swing is awful, and I've been at this for two weeks now, and I'm basically gonna show you how, if I was able to start the game again, which basically I am, what knowledge and experience have I learned over the last eight years of playing golf, getting down so I can turn pro and start teaching, what would I do different? Where would I start? And the last two weeks, this is exactly what I have learned. So if you watch episode two, you'd know that I'm doing backward chaining, which is basically you start from the green and then work your way back. So you start with your putting and your chipping and your pitch shots and slowly build from there, working on sound technique, hitting down on the golf ball, compressing it all the way up until hitting nine o'clock swings into full swings as well. And that's what we're going to be showing you today. So obviously the easy transition from chipping is straight into pitching. So what I'm going to show you now is basically what I've been doing three times a week. So I've done it six times now. But I'm dropping balls from 20, 40, 60, 80 yards to a flag and hitting my sandwich, getting used to having a sound strike, connection, building muscles, because I'm not gonna lie, I felt it over the last two weeks. Muscles that I've never been used before, and this is exactly why I'm doing it, to build my opposite side of the body for my long drive, to stop my swaying, to stop my sliding into the golf ball. And I feel it, which means that I'm doing things that correctly because I'm using muscles, lat muscles, shoulder muscles, glutes, what you want to call them, in my swing to basically hit a left-handed shot. So now you can see me hitting pitch shots on 20, 40, 60, 80, and they're not perfect, don't get me wrong, but this is a sound technique. And if you're starting golf, I know it is incredibly boring, but this is exactly where I would start if I was to do this all over again, and this is exactly what I am doing. Getting solid from here, because if I can hit an 80-yard sand wedge, consistently it means that if i had the same shot with a different loft i.e a seven iron that's going about 130 and to break 100 which is obviously the first goal that's all i'm going to need the other side of this if you've been playing golf for a very long time starting the game again if you've lost that passion in the game starting again and hitting the ball left-handed it's like doing career mode all over again i found the love for the game again i actually want to go and play some golf now i haven't played golf left-handed and that's going to be the next episode I'm going to get on the golf course with no driver because i haven't practiced my driver yet there's no point in me practicing the driver yet and i'm going to go out just with irons and see what i can shoot obviously working on the sound technique that i've done with the chipping the putting and obviously mid to longer irons and how i can basically spread it round but I'm pretty confident that that hundred yard like the hundred breaking a hundred mark shouldn't be that difficult so that's all good and well and doing pitch shots and everything else like that that's great but how have I built my left-handed swing over the last two weeks to hit full shots to get some distance to get some power as well as consistency and that's exactly what we're going to do now I'm gonna pop the camera down I'm gonna talk to you through my swing what I've learned what I found works quickly and efficiently without getting too technical it's so easy in golf to get too technical. At the end of the day, the club face has got to point towards the target, the head's got to travel towards the target, and you've got to hit the ball before the ground. Those three things allow for a decent golf shot. Everything else, plane, tilt, spine angle, whatever, boring. Okay, so the first thing that I've been doing every time I've been hitting the golf ball is basically starting with the sand wedge hitting exactly the same as those shots, getting a feel of how you hit a sand wedge, the relaxed feeling of hitting down on the golf ball, getting the ball up in the air, because when I go onto my eight iron and then go onto my five iron, it's exactly the same feeling that I'm gonna want with those. Okay, so mainly this side on is probably the more, most important thing that I found when learning to hit the golf ball left-handed, for getting down the line. So many people want to learn to get the club on plane and everything else, 
Whereas realistically, the only thing I'm worried about when I'm hitting a golf ball is that the bottom of wherever my club comes down is gonna hit the ball first and then get through. Because if I'm consistently striking the golf ball, i.e. 10 out of 10 or nine out of 10 out the middle, then I can then move on to think about the other things, how to get the ball higher, how to get it further, how to go left and right. If I'm missing the golf ball, thinning the golf ball, whatever, it's very difficult to then work on everything else. So realistically, number one is making sure that you're consistently striking the ball out the middle with whatever swing that you do have. The other thing that you'll notice in my swing now compared to my swing, let's say two weeks ago, and I'll show you a clip of this, is that the big focus I've had is making sure that I'm keeping this width, keeping this left arm straight, left right arm, right arm straight, left arm folded, and from this position coming through and hitting the golf ball. Now, don't get me wrong, this has not been easy. It's taken a lot of practice, but because I've done it right-handed and I know the feeling and the sound, I've just stuck with it. And that is why I'm probably progressing quicker than a beginner, mainly because I'm just trusting the method. I know I need to hit down on the golf ball. I know I need to hit out in the middle and I know I need to have my weight going towards the target when hitting it. The first thing a lot of people do when they're trying to hit golf balls is have this kind of action. Weight goes back, flip of the club. I've been really trying hard not to do that because that's the first thing I've wanted to do when hitting this. And this is why it's good for me as a coach because I now know what my students are now going through. Okay, so I'm going to show you four of my best shots in a row since this journey has started. However, I do start this off with a bad shot. And it's really important when you start the game not to dwell on the bad shots, but remember the good shots. We're very good at remembering bad stuff we do on the golf course. When people come in the pro shop, they tell me about all their bad shots. What they don't tell me is about all their good shots. And it's key to think about your good shots all the time when you're playing. And these are the things, especially when I go on the golf course, I'm going to remember the four good shots that I hit on the range. They were controlled, I made a nice divot, I was balanced, my weight was ahead of the golf ball. And the only reason I'm able to do this is because I'm practicing and committing to what I know is correct. So if you're having lessons or you're looking to work on things on your swing, don't just give up on it on the first signs of the cracks. Don't give up on it when you start hitting some bad shots every now and again. Because the reason that I'm starting to get more and more comfortable is because I know the process is going to work and I know that if I keep working on this, I'm going to be a lot more consistent of a golfer, especially on this side. Okay, so that is the best run I've had in terms of shots. 150 yards average, four in a row, confidence. That's stuff that I'm going to be writing down, remembering when I'm out at the golf course, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, where my hands are. Feelings are important. For me personally, I'm a very much a feel player. Write them down. So many times I've been out on the golf course and I feel something and it feels great and then I forget about it because three months later I come back to it, I do the same thing, I go, oh, of course, that's what I did. Write your thoughts and feelings down. You'll forget them otherwise. Divots, very important. That's awful, and you saw in the first few shots that I hit, very steep, hang down on it. Yes, I want to make a divot. You don't want to make that, though. The ones that I just flushed over here, for example, just bruising the ground. I was obviously way too ahead of the golf ball, too steep here, a lot more shallow mainly putting a bit more weight on that back foot, feel like I'm using the bottom of the club to hit the ground rather than that leading edge. Again, not necessarily vital, but it's a feeling and thought when I go and play on the golf course, I want to have more of these kind of divots in my practice swing rather than these ones. And again, that stuff's gonna help me when I'm playing. This is going to be my go-to club of choice. Hitting this and getting this going 180 yards, something like that down there on average is my go-to. Till I can do this well, I'm not hitting the driver. There's just no point. So I'm gonna hit a few now. I haven't actually hit any longer irons because I haven't felt like I'm being good enough with the seven or eight iron. I'm gonna hit some now, see how we get on. Okay guys, so that's where we're at. Two weeks in of hitting 
wedges, chip shots, mid irons, and now longer irons. Next episode, we're going on the golf course. We're gonna take these clubs and a putter, nothing else, because I don't need anything else at this point, um, and see what kind of scores we're shooting. I'm looking, obviously, for double bogeys maximum on the holes and how I can minimize the mistakes, even though my dispersion is still all over the place. That's the idea anyway. Guys, if you like the series and the episode, leave it a like. As always, subscribe if you're new. Catch you guys later.